Hello, good evening. Welcome to our Easter Friday edition of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lime Bay. Let me tell you, the weather has been absolutely atrocious all across Seton Beach. You know Seton Beach, don't you? Well, they've got a bunch of beach huts and they've been put up too early. I I said this a while ago. I said to Vicky, I said, they've put those beach huts up early this year. What happened? Had a storm last night. All the beach huts have been damaged, all the stuff washed away. Oh, my goodness. It's carnage down there. But the brilliant community that we've got here, as you can imagine, they couldn't wait to get down there and start working on it all. So brilliant. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in a very stormy, you should see the sea. It's a really story line bay. Thanks uh, for joining us once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows. I'm a little bit late. Uh, putting the show on today looking at the time now normally it would have been on 40 minutes ago it's it's now i'm recording this at 20 to 6 on friday the reason being we've been round to the in-laws for a roast dinner so it's been lovely we've had a lovely time the boys are inundated with easter eggs i've just dropped a little bunch of tulips in to our lovely next door neighbors and they handed me a carrier bag full of easter eggs for the boys brilliant lovely what a lovely community we've got here it's really nice i'm brett i'm your host for a nighttime podcast welcome to another episode i've got facebook instagram and youtube they're all called brett's old time radio show if you could give us a little follow that would be just peachy i've got a new podcast as well on a sunday sunday night mystery it's going to be going like you can listen anytime as you can imagine just ask your device to play the podcast sunday night mystery however i've got a brand new one going live this sunday and it's quite a personal one so i hope you enjoy it Time now for our latest episode. It's comedy for a Friday. What could be better on a Friday than a bit of comedy? It's episode 19 of series one. It's called No Spring for Fraser. We present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. Episode 19, No Spring for Fraser, featuring John Laurie and Arnold Ridley with this week's guests, Edward Sinclair, Joan Cooper and Timothy Bateson. (laughs) Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. The date is 1941 and war has become an integral part in the lives of every man, woman and child in these islands of ours. The Warmington-on-Sea Home Guard platoon goes from strength to strength and this morning finds Captain Mannering in his office at their headquarters at the church hall. Come in. Ah, Wilson. Are the men ready to leave for the field craft lecture? Yes, sir. They've fallen in. Good. Before we go, sir, I've, uh, I've got the men uh, waiting outside for you to inspect their rifles, and Fraser with the Lewis gun. Right. Wheel them in. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain Mannering will see you now. Wilson. Sir? Make it an order. <laughs> Captain Mannering will see you now. Right, Godfrey, I'll start with you. Let's have a look at your rifle. Uh, oh, yes, Captain Mannerin. I, I think I've got most of the rust off. <laughs> I should hope so. I'm afraid my memory's the problem. It's not as good as it was, and, and I forgot. You mean you forgot to clean it? No, no. I forgot I left it in the garden. <laughs> we'll be more careful in future. Uh, yes, sir. Jones? Yep. Have a look at your rifle. I must say, I'm surprised at you ever allowing it to get into the state I saw it in. Yes, I'm sorry, sir. You see, I cleaned it with mutton cloth. (laughs) I think there must have been a bit of mutton left on it. Uh, Doesn't it quite excuse the piece of sausage skin in the magazine, does it? (laughs) No, sir, I'm sorry about that, sir. I won't take it into the shop anymore. I think it might be wise. Don't you, Wilson? Oh, yes, sir, yes. uh, Much wiser, yes. (coughs) Right, Fraser? Sir? You clean the Lewis gun up nicely? Aye, I have that, sir. Thank goodness it'll nobody might tell them to clean the damn thing again for another three weeks. That's not the right attitude at all, Fraser. The cleaning of this Lewis gun should be regarded as an honour and a privilege. Uh-huh. If it were a privilege, we'd never get a look in. You and the sergeant would be doing it all the time. That's enough of that, Fraser. <laughs> Just a minute. The butterfly spring is missing from this Lewis gun. Where is it? Good. Oh, I suppose... I suppose I must have left it in my workshop. I took the bets home to buff them up on my polisher. Now, look here, Fraser. In the first place, you've no business taking any part of this weapon off the premises. 
And in the second place, it's quite useless without the butterfly spring. I, uh, I realise that, sir. If an Nazi parachutist came bursting through that door now, all you could do would be to hit him with it. <laughs> Permission to speak, sir? Yes, Jones. If you did hit him with it, wouldn't I have make his eyes water? <laughs> well, that's maybe. The point is, we need this weapon in proper working order. Right, Samuelson, we'll march the men over to the recreation ground, and we'll stop at your place, Fraser, on the way. Come on. Come on, then, everybody. This is my wee den, sir. Thank you, Fraser. Corporal Jones, bring the Lewis gun in here, and when we find the butterfly spring, we can reassemble it. Very good, sir. This is a very uh, useful little shed, Fraser. I'd like somewhere like this myself to, uh, you know, to potter about in. <laughs> well, I use it from uh, woodworking. It's a sort of, sort of hobby, you understand? <laughs> I see. That's funny. What's the matter, Fraser? The box. The box is gone. What box? The box I put my parts in when I was cleaning the gun. Yes, yeah, all right, now, Fraser. This, this box, this box. <laughs> the one you put the parts in. What was it like? Well, it was just a box. Yes, but what was it like? It was like, oh, dear goodness me. It was like the one over there in that corner. Good Lord. It's a coffin. <laughs> Extraordinary thing to collect, Fraser. I'm not collecting them, I make them. Well, I'm sorry, Fraser. Of course, uh, we, we all knew you were an undertaker, but we didn't realise that you actually made the. Uh, well, the, the, uh, the... don't go around broadcasting it, do you? It's morbid, if you ask me. <laughs> it's just a skill I have in my hands. I learned it as a wee boy. You told me you were a fisherman in the Hebrides. Aye, the... <laughs> a wild, lonely place. The Isle of Barra. You had to do everything for yourself. Even making coffin? <laughs> uh -huh. The point is, the box you put the parts in, where has it gone now? It's like it's not Mr Drury will have taken it. Oh, Mr Drury wouldn't do a thing like that. I've known him since he was a lad in short trousers pinching my dad's apples. <laughs> it's no like that at all, you old fool. Mr Drury is a fellow undertaker. He ordered for me because... He doesn't like make his own coffins. It's a, it's a dying art, you see. <laughs> yes, I suppose it is, yes. Now, look here. Every second this weapon is out of action, places the whole security of our island home in jeopardy. Now, let's get round to Mr Drury's at the double. Yes, Mrs Parkinson. This is Miss Baker, Mr Drury's secretary. I'm just ringing to let you know that Mr. Drury is on his way round you. Oh, no, there's no need to make a reservation. We're quite accustomed to dealing with these matters as they arise. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, good morning, Miss Baker. Good morning, Mr. Fraser and Mr. Jones. Hello, Miss Baker. What can I do for you? I, I gather that Mr. Drury is out. Yes, I'm afraid so. An unexpected call. Well, in your line of business, I think most of the calls are unexpected, don't they? <laughs> Shut up, Jonesy. Miss, Miss Baker, eh? Do you mind that Mr Drury ordered a box from me on Wednesday? Why should she mind? She works here. Oh, I'm asking her if she remembers. Oh, I see, I see. Yes, yes, I do remember it quite distinctly. There should be a note of it in the register here. Well, well you see, it's not quite finished to my satisfaction. and I, I would like to examine it. I see. Oh, yes, here it is. Five foot nine elves. That's the one. Inset name plates and brass handles. Oh, I'm afraid it's gone. Gone? It was for Mr. Horace Blewett. Horace Blewett? <laughs> Not old Horace. Why, well, I served him two books worth of best end and neck only two days ago. He's passed away. Poor old Doris. He never even had this week's ration. <laughs> Tell me, Mum, could I go and pay my last respects? He's, he's likely in the chapel of rest, I shouldn't I wonder. No, no, he's still at home. Oh. His brother wanted him to rest in peace overnight on the dining room table. <laughs> oh, indeed, Mum. Well, we're sorry to have trouble you. Come on, Jonesy. Yeah, right. Thank, Thank you. you, Miss Baker. Good afternoon. Ah, uh, Fraser, how did you get on? Well, Mr. Mannering, there's a, there's a wee problem. Why? What's happened? The coffin has already gone. It's at 
21 Marigold Avenue, sir. On the dining room table. <laughs> well, that's that then, isn't it? What do you mean, that's that? We've got to get that spring back. Uh, Mr. Manley, if you'd excuse us from Fieldcraft Lecture, maybe Jonesy and I ought to pop round to Marigold Avenue and pay our last respects, eh? Eh? What? Oh! Oh, yes. Yes, I see what you mean. Yes. Well, in the circumstances, you're excused. We'll see you later. Come on, Jonesy. You keep his brother talking while I have a feel around the coffin. <laughs> right now, Jock. He's in here, in the dining room. Come in. Oh, thank you, Mr. Blewett. In my calling, Mr. Blewett, I am no stranger to sorrow. But had I known that that box was for my old and trusted friend, tears would have mingled with a varnish. <laughs> I didn't think you knew it. Oh, I intimately, which is why I want to spend the next few hallowed moments by his side, or at his feet, <laughs> possibly even near his head. <laughs> I can't tell yet. I see. Jones, eh? Yeah. Haven't you something to say, man? Oh, yes, yes. Just think, Sidney, your brother was in my shop only on Wednesday. I'll give him two books worth the best end of neck. Yeah, well, he, he came home here and he put the shopping down here on this very table. And he unwrapped that very meat that you served him. Yeah, you never know, do you? No, you don't. Not yeah. never, no. And do, do, you know, do you know what his very last words were, what he ever said? No, no. What were they? Well, he, he stood there where Mr. Fraser's standing now with the meat in his hand. Yeah. Look at that, he said. <laughs> All bloody bone. <laughs> And, and, you know, the second hour of that, he were gone. <laughs> We've got to have bones with best end and neck. Yeah, but that were all bone. I want a bit of meat on it. <laughs> what would happen to the sheep if there was no bone oh, with best end and neck? <laughs> His head would all flop about. <laughs> well, there should be some meat as well. Well, there must have been some meat. That's what keeps the bones from falling apart, isn't it? <laughs> Well, there were plenty of gristle. Yeah, and there was meat and all. No, there wasn't. If there'd been any meat, he'd still be with us. It, it was the shock. No, this is... You're as good as saying I'd done him in. No, I'm not, no. I'm just saying it was all bone and gristle. Oh, but that's done it. You've insulted me now. You've insulted me. Come on, John. Hey, come on, come on. Hey, wait a wee while, John. Yeah. You haven't finished yet. I have just a few more respects to pay. No, you haven't. We're going. Come on now. Come on. Not stopping in this house any longer. Well, uh, goodbye to you, Mr. Blewett. We're all bones and gristle. Well, <laughs> yes? Can I speak to Captain Rogers, please? Yes, sir. Hang on. Must have some spares at HQ. Anyway, it's worth trying. Yes, of course, sir. Ah, yeah, oh, Captain Rogers. It's Mannering here. I was wondering what the position is about... Captain Mannering. Yeah, home guard. Yeah. I was wondering what the position... Warmington on sea, home guard. <laughs> Captain Ma... This must be a bad line, Wilson. <laughs> I was wondering what the position is regarding spares for the Lewis machine gun. What have you got in stores? What all? <laughs> oh, I see you. Rather as I expected. But, uh, no, 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 no. It's just a routine inquiry. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, that's that. Not a single nut. Well, couldn't we get a piece of gun manufactured, sir, by some skilled person blessed with a mechanical bent? <laughs> what an awfully good idea, Jones. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Where are we going to find somebody capable of making a precision part for a Lewis gun? Uh, gypsies make clothes bags, sir. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? I'm not really sure, sir. I'm just trying to be helpful. I see. Well, thank you, Godfrey. We'll, we'll bear your suggestion in mind if ever we meet any gypsy. Mr. Manring, Mr. Fraser here would like to express his regret for losing this very important mechanical connivance, sir. I think it's a vital lesson to us all. For the want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For the want of a shoe... The horse was lost. And for the want of a horse, the battle was lost. Hence the saying, keep your hair on. 
I say. But we're not going to be beaten. We are going to... I don't think that's anything to do with it, Joe. I'm to think of it, sir, neither do I. Look, these continual interruptions of yours make it very difficult for me to follow a clear line of action. Where was I? You weren't going to be beaten, sir. Was I? Oh, no, no, that, that, that's right. Now, that gun must be made battle-worthy without delay. There's only one thing for it. What's that, sir? We shall have to pay another visit to Marigold Avenue. But we'll wait until Mr. Blewett has retired. Permission to speak, sir? Yes, Jones. Mr. Blewett has been retired for some years now. <laughs> He's with the Gaslight and Coke Company, you know. <laughs> Used to read the meters. I wouldn't have fancied that myself. I mean, when you've read one, you've read the lot, haven't you? <laughs> Fraser, yes, are you quite sure that this is the dining room window? I've got one. I'm positive, positive. It's awfully dark, isn't it? That's because it's night, Mr. <laughs> of course, there are some places where it doesn't get dark at night. In other places where it's night during the day. Yeah, all right, all right, Joe. On the other hand, there are places where they don't have no night at all. <laughs> I should think it must be very difficult, them places, because you wouldn't know when to put the cat out. Jones! <laughs> Jones, please. Why, sir, what is it you want? Will you be quiet? Oh, certainly, yes, sir, yes. Sir. Now, Wilson, you know the part you have to play? Yes, sir, yes. I go to the far corner of the terrace, and if anyone approaches, I signal. That's right. Off you go, then. Right, sir. Captain Mannering? Yes, Wilson? What sort of signal? <laughs> oh, really? Come on. Give a cuckoo whistle. What? A what, sir? A cuckoo whistle. All right, sir. Well, well how do I do that? Well, do you, you blow through your cupped hands. Oh. Hold this torch a minute. Aye, sir. Now, look. Mm -hmm. You cup your hands thus. Yes. And then you make a cuckoo sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all, all right. Now, look, look here. If you can't do a cuckoo noise, you'd better cough. All right, sir. Yes, yes. Certainly, sir. Yes, sir. Right, Fraser. Have a go at the window. Right, sir. Oh, can I have the torch? The what? The, oh. <laughs> Wilson! <laughs> Bring back the torch. What did you say, sir? Give me the torch. Yes, of course, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. There you are, Fraser. I'll hold the light for you. Thank you, sir. Do you think you can open that window? Ah, oh, of course I can. This will not be the first break-in I've done, you know. Really? I had no idea. <laughs> On board ship, you see, they always keep the grog under lock and key. Eh? Ah, there we are. Well done, Fraser. Now, Godfrey, you know you're a lot of task. Yes, sir. I watch the side of the house. Mr. Blewett's light goes on. I, I give you the signal. Good. Off you go. At the double. At the what, sir? Well, <laughs> all right, go, off you go. Certainly, sir. Best of luck, everyone. Now, Corporal Jones and Private Fraser, you both know what you have to do. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We climb through this window and approach the coffin. I will hold the torch and Mr. Fraser will do the looking. Should it be so necessary, I will do the lifting and Private Fraser will do the ferreting. <laughs> Right, in you go. Right. Right, sir. We're in now. I can see that. <laughs> well, don't worry, sir. Everything will be all right. You can have complete confidence in us. What was that? <laughs> I dropped the torch. Well, pick it up. <laughs> the torch has bust. Oh, that's a good start. Just a minute. There's some candles in here on the sideboard. And some matches. Right, Fraser. Carry on. There you are. It's right. Come on, Jonesy. I don't like this, Mr. Fraser. It don't seem right somehow. Oh, this is a wicked business, but it has to be done. By the way, 
For mercy's sake. Do you see what I see? Yes. That's a bit awkward, isn't it? Gosh. I'll have to go and tell the captain. Well, all right. But don't be too long. <laughs> captain Mannering. Ah, Fraser. Have you got it? No, sir. I've got bad news for you. I'm, I'm afraid, sir. They've, they've screwed him down. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What is it, Godfrey? Well, as it's all clear around the back, I wonder if you could spare me for a few minutes. <laughs> Certainly not. Go back and watch old Blewett's bedroom window again and let me know the moment his light goes oh, on. Oh, all right. It's awfully drafty around there. Here, here, Jonesy. You hold the candle while I undo the screws. Oh, it's all a bit spooky, isn't it? I'll be glad when this is over. Cast a brethren. And hold the light steady, will you? Well, I'm doing my best. Yes. <coughs> Hello. Anybody there? Yeah. What's that? I think it was Mr. Blewett. Oh, I knew we shouldn't have tampered with his coffin. I knew. It, no good can come of it. No good can come of it. I say, who's there? Uh, quick, quick, you old village. Come on, come on. Don't panic, don't panic. <laughs> What's the matter, Fraser? Oh, Blewett, he's coming. He's coming, he's coming. Don't panic. Help me, help me, somebody. Help me. Here, Jules, give me a hand. Oh, oh, right, that's oh, it. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank oh, come you. on, all of you. Make a dash for it. Anyone there? Oh, that, 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 that's funny. I, I'm sure I didn't leave this window open. Captain Mannerin. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Captain Mannerin. There's a light at the window at the back. I think the gentleman must have... Uh, Who's uh, that? Oh, uh, Good evening. <laughs> oh, hello, you know, it's awful. My brother Horace, he, he's got a screw loose. Oh. <laughs> well, I do say there's one in every family. <laughs> Come in. Ah, Wilson, have you dismissed the parade? Yes, sir. And as it's nice and dark, Jones and Fraser have gone straight over to the graveyard. Well done. And they've taken Godfrey with them as a lookout. Good. Well, Wilson, this is our last chance to have a look inside the coffin. Let's hope everything goes well and they find that damn butterfly spring. Yes, sir. I, I must say, I, I thought you were very ingenious this afternoon, you know. The way you managed to put them off burying poor old Mr. Blewett after the service. <laughs> you mean telling the vicar there was an unexploded bomb in the graveyard? <laughs> yes, that's right, sir. Yes, awfully clever. It wasn't bad, was it? Yes, I, I must admit, I had, a, had to smile seeing all the mourners trying to get through the, the lich gate all at the same time. <laughs> Well, anyway, my little ruse had the desired effect. They've left the coffin out there without filling in the grave, thereby giving us a last chance to get the spring back. Oh, Joe, they'd be quick. Come in! Evening, Captain Mannering. Oh, it's you, Virgil. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Wilson. Can I go to that cupboard? I just want to get my spade out. Oh, yes, I, I'm so sorry. Am I in the way? What was that you said? I said, am I in the way? Not you, Wilson. I'm oh. talking, <laughs> talking to Mr. Gayton. Pardon. I said I just wanted to get this shovel. Why? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I... That's what I thought you said. Yeah. Wilson, doesn't it seem a shame that Mr. Yateman has to start digging at this time of night? <laughs> I don't know, sir. I mean, I'm... I used to have an aunt who did all her gardening at night. <laughs> she said it was cooler, you see. Oh, I'm not doing any gardening. I'm going over to the graveyard. Look, I, um, are you sure that you should? I mean, I, uh, what about the unexploded bomb? Well, I'll have to take my chance, I'm afraid. I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight if I hadn't done something about poor old Mr. Blewett. He needs filling in. Yes, <laughs> yes, I agree, but uh, are you sure it's wise to go over there at this time of night? Well, how do you mean? I mean? Well, you never know who you might meet. Yeah, but, but in what way? Well, I mean, somebody might just sort of pop up. Oh, no, sir. When I put them down, they stay down. <laughs> but surely poor Mr. Blewett could wait until the morning. Oh, but it might rain, Mr. Wilson, and that would be an abomination in the sight of the Lord. Don't you think it might be more of an abomination if you were blown to pieces all over the churchyard? <laughs> oh, I'll be all right. Well, I must get started. Good night, Mr. Manry. Mr. Wilson. Good night. Good night. Good night. You. Good night. Well, what do we do now, sir? Nothing much we can do, is there, Wilson? Except hope that we delayed the verger long enough. And the Jones and the men have already managed to find the spring. Yes, but if they can't find it, sir, will uh, will Fraser be court-martialed? Oh, it's a distinct possibility. Well, I know he shouldn't have taken the Lewis gun home with him, but he's only lost the spring. I mean, not the whole gun. Ah, <laughs> yes, Wilson. But have you forgotten the nail, the shoe, and the horse? 
Yes, I had for the moment, sir. You see, it's really quite a list, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Manrin! Mr. Manrin! What is it, Jones? Have we found it? No, sir. We didn't get a chance. We, we got interrupted, sir. Michael Verger, Mr. Yateman. I, uh, if Lance Corporal George had gained doomed to the grave without so much argument, would have had the coffin open and the spring would have been ours by now. I'm sorry, Mr. Manning. I just didn't like it, Sam. It gave me the creeps. Anyway, I didn't lose the spring. You understand, Cotman? I'd have gone down myself. I wonder my shoulders playing up. Yes, yes, Fraser. <laughs> I understand. I wouldn't mind having a go, but I... It's a little too portly, I'm afraid. Yes, all right, Godfrey. Now, look, this isn't getting us anywhere. What matters at this moment is whether the verger recognised you or not. Captain Mannering! Uh, I, I think this may well be the answer to your question, sir. Right, leave this to me. Uh, Captain Mannering, these men of yours have been up to something in my graveyard. One of them was halfway down poor Mr. Blewett's hole. <laughs> I can assure you, Verger, that none of my men would be party to such a childish prank. But I recognise them running off. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sure you must have been mistaken. These men have been in the hall all the evening, studying... Uh, studying camouflage and disguise. I didn't see them in the hall when I came in for my spade earlier. Oh, didn't you? I think you'll find they were there, sir, Mr. Edmund, but uh, you see, they were, they were disguised. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wouldn't have noticed them. These men are, are some of the best disguise experts in the country. Uh, you should see Mr. Godfrey do his impression of a St. Bernard. It's very good. <laughs> all right, that's enough, you. Wait a minute. Why has Grandpa over there got earth all over his face? Who are you calling Grandpa? <coughs> yeah, well, Jones, why have you got earth all over you? Well, I, I just popped out to do a bit of digging for victory, sir. There you are, Virgil. He was digging for victory. Who digs for victory at night? I do. <laughs> There's evil doings afoot and the vicar will have to be informed. I wouldn't be surprised if you find yourselves embroiled with a bishop. Good night. Well, I hope you're all satisfied with your night's work. You know, I rather thought it might turn out this way. Look, Fraser, Sir. if you hadn't lost that confounded spring in the first place, none of this would have happened. Aye. I'm now going to report this matter to headquarters. No doubt you'll be court-martialed for putting the Lewis gun out of action. Never mind, Jock, they won't shoot you. You'd like a fag? Oh, oh thank you. Thank you, John Jay. Hello, operator. Give me Eastgate, one double six, please. I said this would happen, sir. Oh, shut up, Wilson. Anyone got a light? Hang on, Judge, I've got some matches somewhere. Ah, uh, here they are, I. Hello, GHQ here. Yeah? Ah, Mannering here. Could I speak to Captain Turner, please? Hey, Jones, uh, look what I found in my jacket pocket with my matches. Blimey, it's the butterfly spring. <laughs> it must have been there all the time. <laughs> Captain Turner, yeah. Who's that? Ah, Captain Turner, it's Mannering here. Who? Captain Mannering. Oh, Mannering. Oh. I'm afraid I have a rather serious matter to report to Captain you. Captain Mannering. Captain Mannering, look what I've found in my pocket. Oh, not now, not now, Fraser. You see, Captain Turner, one of my men has mislaid... Uh, Captain uh, Mannering? The spring! i found the spring! Uh, uh, <laughs> that is, he's... Uh, 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 Wilson, you deal with this. Take the floor. <laughs> Hello? Hello? What, what shall I say, sir? How do I know? Use your initiative. Hello, hello. Oh, Lord. Uh, uh, here you are, Godfrey. You, you look after this. Tell him a good experience for you. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Hello. Oh, hello, sir. I'm in Navy stores here. <laughs> do you have an account with us? No, of course I do. <laughs> well, then, I, I'm terribly sorry. I just can't help you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> That episode of Dad's Army from the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. You heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John the Measurer, Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Edward Sinclair, The Verger, Joan Cooper, Miss Baker, and Timothy Bateson as Mr. Blewett. No Spring for Fraser was adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dials. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Dad's Army. And don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow.
with another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, going live at 5 p.m. GMT. I'll get the time right tomorrow. I do apologize. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a brand new podcast. It's every Sunday it goes live as a new podcast. However, our previous episodes are always available. All you need to do is ask your device to play the podcast Sunday Night Mystery, and I'd really appreciate it if you check it out. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Autumn Radio Show. Love you. Bye.